Hey YouTube, Estacado5000 here. What's up? Here's another retro deck profile. It's called Gravekeeper Burn from the Shonen Jump Edison. So here we go. We got free Gravekeeper Spy. We got uh, two Gravekeeper Commandant, Gravekeeper Descendant, and Gravekeeper Guard. So I'm bringing these together because basically this is what brings one of the main names to the build. We got Gravekeeper Spy, which allows you to special summon one Gravekeeper monster from your deck on the field in attack or defense mode with 1500 or less attack. So basically, with this, you can bring out like, um, you can bring out like Descendant, or you can bring out Gravekeeper's Guard, or another Spy itself, so it's pretty good. The only one you can't summon via this effect would be this one, but you could summon one of, the, another one of this one, and or these two. There's a lot of options you can use, and a lot of resources you can use. Um, Commandant. It's a fact is you can discard them from your hand to add one Necro Valley field spell from your deck to your hand. So it's pretty good. And and if Necro Valley is on the field, this becomes an instant 2100 attack point level 4 monster. So it's really good. Descendants, utter, Descendants effect would be if you contribute one Gravekeeper monster on your field to destroy one card your opponent controls. So it's really effective. And then Gravekeeper's Guard, when it's flipped up, you can return one monster on the field to the owner's hand regardless of position. So it's really good. It's a really good, good like, trio of Gravekeepers. So there we go. You got one Gale to Whirlwind. So basically what this does is this cuts your opponent's attack in half. And it's the, uh, one of the, it's like, I think it's the lone tuner of the build. It's really good combined with brain control. You take control of one of your opponent's monsters, summon this, and go into a synchro summon. So it's pretty good. Then you got one Sangin, which can search for like a Grave Keeper Spy, your Gale the Whirlwind, Grave Keeper's Guard, Descendant, Morphin Jar, Battle Fader, and Cyber Valley. So you got a lot of options. Morphin Jar, when this is flipped up, both players discard the cards in their hands, draw five new cards. So it's really good. Then you got two Cyber Valleys. It's a really good card. Its first effect is it has three effects. Um, when this card is selected as an attack target by opponent's monster, you can remove this card from play to draw one card and end the battle phase. Its other effect is you can remove from play this card and one face-up monster you control to draw two cards. And its other third and final effect is you can remove th from play this card and one card from your hand and place one card from your grave on the top of your deck. So basically, you could either use this as a battle fader if this is selected as an attack target and draw one card. Its other effect is you could banish one monster other monster on your field along with this to draw two cards and the other effect is you can banish him and and just i think and banish one card i believe no it's send one card from your hand to the graveyard to place one card from the in your graveyard on the top of your deck so it's a lot of options you can pull with this card but mainly i would probably use the, the first two effects the third effect doesn't have any relevance i would only use the first two effects depends on the situation so it's a pretty good card then last but not least battle fader when you when you have no monsters on your field and your opponent declares an attack, you can special summon this from your hand and end the battle phase. So it's a pretty good card, but this gets banished ap on the, after it was summoned this way, so it's pretty good. Now for the spells, you got two Necro Valley. Um, basically, it gives your Gravekeepers 500 attack and defense points, and any effects evolving the graveyard on either side is negated and you cannot remove any cards from play as long as this is out on the field so it is effective it helps boost your gravekeeper's monsters attacks by 500 so but the only downside to this is you can't use effects that involve the graveyard and you can't remove cards from play so cyber value effect can't really be used as long as this is out so but it is worth it because, for example, your opponent can't like use Treeborn Frog. They can't use anything involved in it. It's pretty decent. Then you got Royal Tribute. This card with Necro combined with Necro Valley. This can only be used with Necro Valley on, is on the field. Both players send all monster cards in their hands to the graveyard. So this is a really good way to really cripple your opponent. So it's a really good card, but you can only use it when Necro Valley is on the field. Then you got a uh, free Book of Moon. Then you got one um, gold sarcophagus. Basically what this does is you can remove one card from your deck from play. And then on your second standby phase after you activated this card, you can add that card to your hand. So this is a good way to get to one of your key cards like Starlight Road, Book of Moon, um, Necro Valley, Commandant, Morphin Jar. There's a lot of options to pull for this card. A lot of options. You got Smashing Ground, Limited Area B. Messenger of Peace, 
These two cards are for stall for the uh, burn uh, combo with the motion cannon. So basically, these two, along with gravity bind, basically, um, I'm going to get gravity bind right, just to explain this together. So these three, I'm just going to explain these three together. So these three cards right here create a bit of a stall for your opponent, and you can use this as a combo to basically wipe out your opponent's life points within a matter of turns. Like, you do some damage, and then you use this to finish your opponent off, and these three cards can help you get that benefit, basically. This doesn't allow any of your opponent's monsters level 4 or higher to attack. This doesn't allow your opponent's monsters for 1,500 or more attack attack points to attack, but you have to pay 100 light points every stand, every one of your standby phases. And Luminary B switches all your opponent's monsters level 4 above to defense mode, and they stay like that. It goes for your monsters too, but it's kind of worth it. And this, each time, each of your main standby phases, you place one counter on this card, and then you can send this card to the graveyard. Your opponent loses 1,000 light points for each counter on it. So basically, if you have these cards out for like 8 turns, or you have 2 of these, and each have 5 counters each, or four counters each, you can send both of them, it's automatic game over. So it's a really good card. But you have to watch out for cards like Heavy Storm and all that. And you also got Ceasefire, which is not a good way to finish your opponent off. After you go into battle phase, if they have like 2,000 or less light points or 1,500 or less light points, and you had three or four monsters out, you can just flip this over at on your second on your second main phase or on your opponent's main phase. And that's, you know what I mean? It's pretty good. Then you got Magical Cylinder, two Bondless Trap Hole, you got two skills drain, which really hurts your opponent from using effects to make a comeback like Black Rose Dragon, um, Caius, Mobius, all that stuff. There's a lot of ways you can use that card. Then you got two dark bribes to stop your opponent's heavy storms from working. Same thing with Starlight Road. The only difference with dark bribe is they can draw one card. And Starlight Road, when two or more cards you control would be destroyed by a card effect, you can negate that effect to destroy it, especially summon one Stardust Dragon. So it's really good. Then you got one Mirror Force, one Psalm Judgment, and Torrential Tribute. So for, for the um, extra deck, you got Chimera Tech, you got Armory Arm, Allied Justice Cataster, Brionac, Goyal Guardian, two Arcanite Magicians, one Ancient Fairy Dragon, one Black Rose, one Black Wing Armor Master, two Stardust Dragons, just because of the Starlight Road, Fought Rural Archfiend, Avenging Knight, Parshaft, Colossal Fighter, and Mistworm. So that's the build. Hope you all enjoyed. More videos coming soon. Comment and subscribe. Later, guys.